OK, let's take a look at why you might choose media studies as one of your options at GCSE. So we study quite a few areas of the media studies whilst we, of media whilst you're um, studying the course. So I'm just going to go through some of those areas and then you maybe get an idea as to what areas of the media we look at and how this could impact your potential choices for like future careers or why you might find this is an interesting subject. So first of all, we look at the TV industry, OK? And we answer key questions such as how does the TV industry work? OK, how is the TV industry changing? So it used to be that we used to put the TV on and if we wanted our favourite programme, maybe we had to sit down at six o'clock at night and, and watch it live there and then. And if we missed out then, then and my mate watched it, then I'd have nothing to talk about with him because he'd watch it, watched it at six o'clock and I'd missed it. Now, one of the initial changes then is the fact that we had video recorders so we could record those TV programmes ourselves and then we could watch them back ourselves later on or we could save them for another day. OK, but obviously now, like, you know, and I'm talk probably talking about times before most of you were born there because now everything's just on demand at the touch of a button. This picture there I chose on purpose because it sort of represents just how much choice we actually have. Maybe it's different apps that provide TV now or the fact that we... Um, have lots of different TV programs that we can choose at any one time and it doesn't and it doesn't rely on people watching the same thing at the same time anymore so we go on the internet we go on Netflix and we just choose whatever we want to watch and the whole series is often there so then this phrase is like binge watching that have turned up where we can sit and watch a full series back to back so we have a look at the industry we have to, we have a look at that we have a look at why things um, have changed that way and how audiences now interact with their programs we also watch them and think about why you know how a tv program actually works so we look at who who are the main actors and how is the story being told and how does it how does the writer make it interesting how does the director create drama so then i'm i'm compelled to carry on watching all the way through the end how do they create that feeling at the end of an episode where i have to start watching the next episode so we look at loads of different things like that when we look at the tv industry um maybe maybe you're interested in journalism OK, so maybe you want to you, you're somebody who's interested in like uh, following current affairs or uh, you like reading magazines. I mean, you'd be quite a rare person now because these two things are dying off a little bit. But journalism isn't dying off because people are accessing newspapers and magazines in different ways. So it might just be that you access it through an app which gives you stories that you're interested in. It could be sort of just articles that you read on social media. But a journalist or some form of reporter or some form of media producer is making that content for you. So we actually look at what it would be like to be a journalist in the, in the modern world. Now, what would it like be like to, to want to keep track of current affairs and start making a note of those and then how we share those with audiences? OK, so we focus on newspapers and magazines. We gain an understanding of how these magazines and newspapers actually shape the world and give us information or we debate whether is it information they're giving us or are they trying to entertain us, okay? We debate, are they, is it a newspaper that shapes the world or is it the government that shapes the world, the governments that shape the world and the newspapers are just report on it? And there's quite a few issues in there that we look into. Um, what about the film industry? From Pinewood all the way over to Hollywood, we, we look at the British film industry and we understand how it markets and positions itself to, to uh, its audiences. We think about issues around like the fact that most of the films that you're watching and probably most of the TV that you're watching comes from America. And we look at how much of that is actually British and how much of it is American in terms of what we watch. Um, now, let's have a look at jobs and things. So one, uh, sorry, another industry we look at is actually the games industry. And the UK, UK is very well known for its game industry. Um, and maybe not everyone realises how much of an impact Britain has there on that, but games like Grand Theft Auto are made in Edinburgh. Elite De uh, Dangerous is made in Cambridge. Candy Crush and Batman are all very popular games, and they're made in London. OK, um, so there is a massive games industry, and we actually analyse part of the game industry, gaming industry as well and understand how that works. So this is a really great course if you're interested in actually going into any one of those areas. If you're a, a want-to-be games designer, you need to think very carefully, for instance, do you want to be the person programming the games or do you want to be the person who designs the games? OK, if you are interested in programming, maybe go and have a look at the computer science course and you'll learn more about the technical understanding that goes into the games industry. 
if you want to make and you're very focused on creating things, check out Creative Eye Media as well, because that is very similar to media studies. But there is a lot more practical, hands-on doing IT production work and doing media production work than you'll get in this GCSE. But if you're into, but but this subject complements both of those very very well because this will give you understanding as to why we do these things, how we engage audiences, why are games so popular, what age groups do they actually target? Okay, um, I mean we've got a strong media industry in terms of TV and film as well. You know, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, James Bond, Harry Potter, Beauty and the Beast. These are all massively successful films that, uh, uh, in part, of, uh, they are part of the British film industry. They're also part of Hollywood. And we understand where that balance and where that mix comes from. Okay, Looking at TV, the, the BBC is internationally renowned for how good it is at doing live broadcasts. It's very good at um, providing top quality entertainment on TV. Yet they don't do they don't have any advertising. So how do they do that? And we look into that. Uh, TV um, productions such as Sherlock, Doctor uh, Doctor Who. In fact, Luther, which is one of the texts that we'll study, we look at into various different ideas of TV and film. But if you're interested in getting into TV and film in the future, this is definitely a subject you should consider doing. Um, then we look into advertising. Now, advertising is everywhere, and this is an example of Times Square, for instance. Uh, in New York, where there's, you know, advertising is known for having these massive billboard adverts all over the place. OK, um, but actually advertising is in more places than that. It's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. It's inside every TV program that you watch. OK, and we look at advertising. We understand how the language that they use in advertising is done in a way that appeals to the audiences. But we also look at how um advertising is it just pops up everywhere and how it influences these people to do things or how it sells a lifestyle and makes you want to be a part of that lifestyle and believe you have to buy that product to do that um and then finally one of the main things and this goes up through every single subject that we do within this course is it within this subject is the online world facebook youtube twitter how are they why are they so so important how do they gather information about audiences? How are they used for advertising? Okay. How are they used whilst we're watching our favorite TV programs? How are they used whilst we're uh, getting excited about up and coming films that are coming out? You know, questions like that are things that we'll talk about and we'll work on. And you'll gain a real good understanding of how the world works by studying media studies. So GCSE media studies, the actual course itself looks like this, okay? So there's two written paper exams, one about exploring the media, and that's where you'll look at a variety of different media to products. You'll learn about how to analyze them. You'll learn about how to look at what makes a typical um, horror film, for instance, or what makes a typical crime drama. You'll learn about what makes a typical magazine. And then you'll be even given something you've never seen before in the exam, and you'll have the skills by then to look at that product and just analyze it there and then and get some good understanding as to what that producer was intending on doing when they put that product together. In comp two, which is the paper two, you'll be understanding media forms of products in more detail. That's where we'll have a deeper look into the music industry and we'll have a deeper look into the um, TV industry. We'll look at examples of products from those industries and we'll analyze them. We'll understand how those industries work uh, and you gain a real good in-depth understanding there of TV and music. Um, and then COM3 is the practical unit. This is only one third of the course. So that's what, So this course is 65% exam work and then the rest of it uh, made up with like 35% made up with coursework. Now this is where you'll get given a set brief by the exam board and you'll be expected to create a creative media product using that brief. Now they're always very kind. So we'll get a TV choice, we'll get a film choice, we'll get a magazine choice and we normally get a music industry choice as well. Um, and you might be asked, you'll have the option there to make, you could even make a video, so you can make a TV drama or you can make a music video, or you could do some posters and, a, and like a, a full advertisement campaign. You might have the option to do a website. You might have to do a combination of a couple of those things. So it's quite a good, fun, creative and practical unit that will give you a variety of different practical skills that complement all the theory skills that you've been learning. Um, so I think you just need to get in touch with me if you want to, uh, ask me any specific questions. I've not gone into the specifics of what's in every single unit or the theories that we look into, but they're all definitely there. And that's something you'd learn about um, just by coming, coming to ask me or as we start developing the course. 
But here's a list of potential career opportunities for typical people that, that want to come and do media studies, okay? If you think interested in doing drama, you might be interested in performing arts, this is a great complementary subject to that or a subject to do because you're interested in that in the future because you'll understand how and why this lots of different industries work, okay? If you want to go into broadcast and media, filmmaking, journalism, definitely a subject you should consider, okay? Advertising, marketing, it's definitely for you. If you're doing art or crafts, um, you might want to consider doing media studies as well. I've got a number of photography students this year doing media and they really complement each other. Lots of practical skills, skills being developed in photography and their photography is getting better and better because of their understanding that they're developing in media studies and vice versa. Their practical skills in media studies are better and better because of their photography course. So lots of good complementary ideas. The same with the creative by media and information technology. You know, you're going to be using computers a lot. You're going to be involved in um, lots of different technologies and you're going to become really really um, comfortable using those technologies and, and in a way that prepares you for going into work one day with them as well okay so uh, i look forward to you getting in touch with me if you've got any more questions or um and letting me know that you're wanting to take the choice and come and do media studies that'd be brilliant if you're interested in something that's a bit more practical and less theory based go check out the Creative Eye Media video because I think that's very useful. Or if you're very specifically interested in doing a lot more camera work, go and check out the uh, photography video. And if you're thinking this is good, but actually it's more games and programming that I'm interested in, go and check out Computer Science. Okay, so thanks for listening and I look forward to hearing from you soon.